What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 24th of January in 2019, as well as looking at some other stocks, some other ETFs, and some news that's going on right now in the overall stock market. So for those of you all that do enjoy this content that I'm producing on a day-to-day -day basis, feel free to smash that like button. It really does help the channel grow. And I do appreciate you guys if you do smash that like button because that's telling me that I'm doing a good job with this content. So I do appreciate all of that feedback. And if you do have any feedback, drop a comment down below. I would love to hear from you guys. So let's get right into the topic of today's video. So I'm recording this one around 17 minutes left in the overall market we can see the SPX the S&P 500 the 500 largest US companies is pretty much flat on the day literally we're down only 10 cents right now literally zero right now pretty much zero percent move on the SPX right the Dow Jones is up around $53 or down $53 rather, down around 0.2%. And the NASDAQ is up around $35 right now, up around 0.54% on the day. So overall, guys, if and unless anything crazy happens, you know, this is where we're going to end up closing the day on the overall markets, right? Pretty flat day overall, but I did want to get into some closer term time frames here to just dig into some of these patterns with you guys very quickly so we can get a better idea of, you know, where we could be headed over the next couple of days. So if we're just judging on this longer term chart here, the 184 hour chart, it's very obvious that we're seeing a resistance under the 180 SMA for the SPX, and it's a very similar situation with the Dow Jones, right? We can see under the 180 SMA, strong resistance for the two indices, the SPX and the Dow Jones. We can see it got rejected here in terms of the Dow Jones back in uh, December. Here again, back in October, we peaked above it a little bit back in November, but ultimately pushed below it. So this is a very strong resistance. We've been talking about it and it's still valid because we have yet to break above it in terms of these two uh, uh, indices, right? The SPX three times in the past, right? Also in October, also in November, and in December is where we had difficulty breaking above that simple moving average, right? We've been talking about this over the past couple of days. And let's take a look a little bit closer here on a 20-day, uh, one-hour chart basis to see some closer movement in terms of the SPX. So in, in yesterday's video, for all of you that recall, I was talking about this pattern that's slowly starting to unfold in terms of the SPX. PX. We saw the peak at 26.75, then we saw another peak at 26.50. What this is telling me is that the SPX is slowly starting to form a descending pattern of lower highs. And what I wanted to see in today's session was I wanted to see if we were going to form another one of those peaks at a previous uh, or a lower low rather from the previous, right? And this is exactly what ended up happening. We can see earlier on in the day, guys, around, let's say, what time? was this 10 30 a.m we saw that peak at around 26 45 and then another peak at around 26 43 which was lower than that previous peak from yesterday so in my opinion judging off of this we are seeing a slow descending pattern of lower highs in terms of the SPX over these past three days. It's kind of evident based off of this chart, right? But also, I wanted to point out, this is like a bullish pendant right now that's slowly starting to form on the SPX, meaning that if we do end up popping out of here, that is a very bullish move for the SPX. So what you need to keep an eye on, guys, and what I'm keeping an eye on is, you know, towards the end of this session and obviously towards tomorrow's session and the rest of this uh, month really is we want to see if we're going to break below here for the continuation of the downtrend right this this um you know trend line that I just drew for you guys right here and this mini one from the past two days that you can see right here you know this is a resistance for where we are right now in the SPX so if we break out of here that's a pretty bullish move guys because that's a break of the resistance the top channel that we can see here and here but if we break the support which is right here from the previous two days you know if we break down right 
that's going to be a reversal pattern to the downside and the continuation is going to continue. So right now we're in a pretty, you know, um, interesting spot for the SPX in the smaller time frames here on the five day, five minute also on the 20 day, one hour, pretty interesting spot guys, because you can see it's kind of like a bullish pennant. We can either go up here, break that resistance, or we can break the 50 SMA and continue that downtrend that we've been on over the past three trading days. So keep an eye on those levels guys for tomorrow. And same thing with the Dow Jones guys, right? This one is in the process right now of making its third higher low, right? Or lower high right? Rather. And uh, same thing, right? It peaked at 24,750. The next peak was at around 24,600, uh, roughly, right? And now we're in the process of making that third potential peak. But again, this is kind of in a pennant as well. So if we do end up breaking out, that's going to be a bullish move. But if we get rejected here and slowly break the 50 SMA to the downside, that's going to be a pretty good move to the downside uh, and continuation of the downtrend over the past three days, in my opinion, uh, for the Dow Jones. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, I would love to hear from you all. So from the NASDAQ composite, guys, this is one that's actually looking the best in terms of technicals, right? We're holding that 50 the SMA is a support. We're slowly starting to find consolidation on it, and we're slowly starting to form a cup pattern, testing really the next resistance, which would be at around 6,800, guys. That's where, from just judging based off this chart, that is where we can see the NASDAQ go. If it does end up bouncing successfully to the upside, maybe if it heads into the mid 6700s, you know, we're going to be testing that resistance at around 6800 to 6850 over the next couple of days. So, you know, the higher low, higher high pattern is still intact for NQ, unlike the Dow and unlike the SPX. So the, the you know NQ guys, it's just been on a uh, just better path over the past couple of uh, trading days, and it hasn't really fallen as much as the Dow and the SPX over the past couple of um, trading days. But what levels to keep an eye on, guys? You know we've been talking about that sixty-eight hundred dollar resistance on the uh, NASDAQ. If we if we can take a look a little bit closer here, you can see it's right around sixty-eight fifty. I just talked about that. If we're trading in this channel, which is very still valid, which is still valid right now. Like I said, if we're slowly starting to push back up, we're going to be testing this resistance and the top of the channel. But let's say we start to push down here, that's going to be a break of the pattern. And especially if we break around 66.30, uh, which is another support, that's going to be a break of the pattern to the downside. And of course, 6,500 is the next support that you want to keep an eye on to see if the uh, NQ NASDAQ composite is able to break below that. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the three major indices. So is the stock market about to sell off? Honestly, guys, based off these technicals right now, what I'm seeing is, yes, I do think we are about to sell off. Judging off of these, you know, major uh, time frames, these larger time frames here on the 180 day four hour chart, you know, I think we are going to sell off, especially with the tensions in the trade war. We've been seeing a lot of news recently that, you know, Trump and China are having a little bit of difficulties coming to a uh, trade war agreement, right? And we know there's a deadline on this by March 1st. And if they don't come to an agreement by March 1st, I think that's going to be very bad for the stock market, right? We have about a month and seven days until March 1st, guys. So I think February is going to be a very eventful month. I'm actually super excited. And I want to show you guys something else here very quickly, um, you know, based off of this. So um, very quickly here, we saw today that, uh, who was it, guys? I keep forgetting. U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross said the United States and China were a long way from resolving their trade dispute while a rally in ship makers lifted the uh, NASDAQ. So this proves right to my point, right? The Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross said the exact same thing that we've been hearing out there that 
they've been having difficulties, right? You know, Trump might be saying the trade war is uh, the, the deal's coming, right? But this, in my opinion, is just to pump the stock market with some optimism. It's false hope, in my opinion, right? I think that they are far from a trade deal right now, and this is going to be pushing the markets down over the next month. But of course, let's say miraculously they do come to an agreement by March 1st. I think that's going to be pretty good for the stock market, right? So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Honestly, guys, I think, you know, if we don't hit that trade war agreement, I think there's going to be a lot of blood in the waters in the first half of 2019, maybe the entire year until they do come to an agreement, guys, because I believe... He's going to be pushing up the tariffs to 25% and where, you know, the Chinese economy is right now where they're already doing poorly. You may be thinking like, China, why aren't you doing this trade deal? It's going to help you out. But, you know, they're not really budging. Neither is Trump. We know how that's that's been. You know, we know how that's going. And, uh, you know, it's just not looking too great right now, in my opinion, in terms of the trade deal, unless we get some miraculous news over these next couple of weeks about any new, you know, glimpses of hope, right? And, you know, not false hope, legit hope, right? We want to see something like that. So that is my just little two cents here. I think the markets are going to continue to fall. We just need to see that big red day. I know we got one two days ago, but we need to see that big solidifying red day that's going to push the SPX, you know, out of this, um, you know, little pattern that we do see here forming today. And it's going to be pushing the SPX down. This is what uh, we need a day that's just going to push it down, uh, you know, kick some more panic cells in and that's just going to send down the market mixed with the trade war news all this jazz that's been going on so what did i end up trading today guys not too great of a day for me today to be completely honest with you guys, because we did see the overall markets. Um, we were flat on the day, guys. We can see we're about to close in five minutes. Pretty flat on the entire day so far. You know, not too surprising that I didn't do too well today. Because, you know, I took a trade in TVIX early on in the day. And I ended up scaling into this position starting out at around $51.20. This was this morning. I put it in the group chat, like I said, and I ended up holding through this pain that we saw right after I got in, right? I ended up holding through it, guys. We bounced all the way down to $48. So from $51.20, guys, I scaled in, and I was down around 5%. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I let it go a little bit loose today in terms of the stop loss, and this was mostly because I scaled in with a very small portion of my goal position. When I typically do this, guys, I don't always keep as tight of a stop loss because I want to see if I would want to add more money at a lower price, even if it does go down two, three, four percent below where I would typically cut my losses. So I ended up getting in, like I said, at around 51.20. We ended up dumping down around four or five percent from where I got in. We started to see some consolidation. I honestly did not end up adding more shares because at this point the markets were pushing up and I wanted to see a you know peak in the market so we ended up getting that double top in the SPX and honestly this would have been a smart opportunity to add more money into TVIX because of the double top but like I said guys I ended up not adding more money it was just kind of a weird trading day for me today and I honestly ended up just taking a very minimal loss on this because we started to see that we pushed up a little bit from this double bottom on the SPX, which means this one, uh, or the double top on the SPX, not a double bottom, top on SPX. And then we obviously saw a double bottom here. This is where I should have added the money, did not add the money. Then I ended up just pretty much breaking even, taking a very small loss on TVIX today at around 1 o'clock, 108, as we started to run back up. And honestly, guys, I view this as me... Uh, pretty much lucking out today because I did say 
in the chat that I was being a little bit ballsy with not riding a stop loss and just riding it, um, you know, without a stop loss and just letting it fly. I don't typically do that, but today I did do that. Ended up going down 5%. There goes the markets uh, closing. And guys, I was a little bit scared right here because I was down 5% and I wanted to just get out at that point. And we ended up pushing up, right? And then I ended up just taking that very brief loss at around $51. But I'm not too mad, guys, because, you know, the markets weren't too crazy today. Not too much opportunity out there. And honestly, guys, you know, I don't trade every single day. I have been over the past couple of months, to be completely honest with you guys. But I try and tell you all that it's not necessary to trade every day. It's better to just wait for opportunities to come to you and take advantage of them and have proper risk management. And today, guys, I know I said, you know, I scaled in, but I still should have had somewhat of a stop loss. I just let it ride, guys, and I ended up, you know, pretty much dodging a bullet, right? I dodged a bullet because I was down 5%. You guys might think I'm being a bit dramatic, but honestly, I always set stop losses no matter what. But today, for some odd reason, I just went against my rules, dodged a bullet, and uh, ended up not really taking or just barely taking a little loss. So let me know what you guys ended up trading down below. Did you guys trade TVIX? Are you still holding TVIX? What do you want? Uh, what are you doing? What do you want to see out of this position? I'm very curious to know. But other than that, guys, you know, some stocks that we did see do very well today were the semiconductor stocks like Micron. I think NVIDIA did very well today. Advanced Micro Devices, AMD did very well today. Did Intel do well today? I don't know. Is Intel, I don't even know Intel's uh, ticker symbol off the top of my head, but I think Intel did pretty well today as well. But let's just take a look at those guys. We can see Micron was up 5.3%. Very solid day. MU guys was up 8%. And for those of you guys that don't know, I'm in MU in my longer term portfolio. And I'm down like, I believe at this point, like 25% on my position. So the fact that we gained 8% actually bumped me to that 25% because I was already down actually 30% or something like that before today. So I'm actually, you know, not even mad about losing money on TVIX today because one of my holdings in my long-term portfolio did very well, 8% day today. So I'm actually pretty, pretty happy about Micron finally starting to gain some, uh, traction back from the low at about $28. It was up to around $38 today, I do believe, $37. So it's been able to gain about $0.10 cents per share over the past couple of weeks. And, you know, very happy about that, guys. Let me know if you're a Micron shareholder down below. In the comments, I would love to know. So NVIDIA up $8 today, up around 5.73%. And this is the trend that we noticed, guys. Semiconductors did very well, as you can see from that article that I posted, uh, or I pulled up very quickly before it said chip makers, um, you know, are doing well, we can see exactly why there. So, you know, that's what I'm looking at, guys. We saw another move today from Cron, very solid move. If you guys traded Cron today, let me know. We can see it pulled back from 16, held that 50 SMA, bounced on it very nicely, and now we're going to be testing that 16 level again as a resistance point. And if we break out of there, guys, Guys, who knows? Kron can run even to the 17 level. We don't know. And I made a video talking about Kron, how there's a ton of hype behind it. And I made that video, but I think this day and literally the next two days, we shot up all the way to $16. If you guys remember that, let me know down below. It's just been a very strong performing stock as well as NBEV, guys. NBEV has been doing pretty well over the past couple of days. And this looks like it's opening up for a nice trade. We can see it's holding the 50 SMA. It's holding this uptrend right here very nicely. So if it ends up pushing, guys, maybe into the 675 range, I could see it run back to the 770 range, which does give it around a 14% profit margin potential on NBEV. So that's pretty much what I'm looking at right now, guys. Just drop a comment down below. Let me know what stock. ETFs you're watching, what you're trading. I would love to talk to you guys about that. So if you did enjoy this video, feel free to smash a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. 
in the description box. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.